Here we go then for our first grid of the day. Harris Alley starts on pole position in this three from four heat format for our Honda Cadet class. He'll have Freddie House to go for company on the front row. Then it's going to be Thomas Potter. He's with James Fabricius with Max House to go and Larry Price. Row four, Joshua Sullivan, who's had a big crash in practice this morning. Work being done on that car. Be interesting to see if he manages to get out for heat number one. He's alongside Harry Samuel on row four. Maximus Lewis and Alfie Forrester there on row five to complete your top ten with guest driver Benjamin Lord alongside George Ralston on row number six. Then it's Isabella Stansmore, Wilson and Tom Drake on row seven with Lewis Hall and Max Wheatley 15th and 16th, Max Gray Trex and Jensen White 17th and 18th. The top 20 then completed by Rio Wardalli and Cameron Tipping. They'll have Alex Lynn and Stanley Clark behind them on row 11. Ralphie Branscombe and Isaac Hubern complete your 24 kart honda cadet grid here then at the cadet kart championship as i said with honda it's three from four heat so you'll see some of our drivers out in the first three then they'll see some out in the second three and then some of them will be out in heats one then maybe three and four so it's a real mixed bag in terms of the grid it's going to keep them keep the uh, grids interesting of course it is a random grid format as well and particularly with honda cadet we will have our b final so the top 20 in terms of points, they'll progress automatically into the A final. After that, everybody else in terms of points, they'll go into the B final. The top eight from that progressing through and to take up positions 21 to 28 in the A final. We'll end the day on this occasion. I know we've ended the day with Honda Cadet all season. However, with how close the Minimax Championship is between Lewis Goff and Jared Fox Whiteley, I believe, and rightly so, fittingly, we will end the, champ end the race season and the race day with the final in Minimax here. They go into that championship with a three-point difference with Fox and Whiteley having a slight lead in the championship. Down there on the dummy grid then, we're just waiting for final clearance as the practice session is just coming through the scrutineering bay down at the far end. As you can see here though at Ella Park, a couple of very, very nice raised vantage points. None other really than my commentary box, which is about 20 foot up in the air with a good view of the entire circuit. The cameras as well, all nicely raised up. Out of the dummy grid then come our Honda Cadets with Harris Alley leading our drivers round. They will make their way round. They'll do one rolling up lap and then grid up. Pole position here then at Ella Park is on the right-hand side with the first corner being that Degna one hairpin. As we follow Isaac Hubern round the track then as he's the final runner out of the random grid. They head down. This is the first corner of the track then. This is the Degna one hairpin. On that first lap, it is quite wide. Then it's going to be a very, very fast corner as we head down towards then the double apex right of Shoemakers, which is where everybody now is heading down as we follow, I say, follow the 14 of Hubern. Then it's a run into the tightest corner on the track into Holmes. Look, look for that corner to be a prime overtaking spot for our runners in this first race for Honda Cadet. Then there's the corner, it's O'Rossi, it's flat out and it's a left-hander with a, a tight entry and then it eases up before the right-hander at Clinton's, it drops away then the track quite heavily. You'll see in a few moments, the drivers, they go over a short crest, then they drop down the hill in towards Barney's, which is a really, really tight right-hand hairpin. The cut, the tyres on the outside moved out of the way, which has opened that corner up a little bit, will allow for some great side-by-side -side action. Then there's the final heavy braking zone, which is into Alan Wones. The final corner is a case of chuck it in not really hard on the brakes. They're just going to throw the cart in there and hope it sticks into that final corner of the track. Hondas then making their way round the front of the field already in position. It's going to be a nervous wait then now for our pole sitter, Harris Alley, who's going to be, have been stationary for the best part of a minute by the time the, all of the grid makes their way into position. The final few runners just rolling in as we await Ralphie Branscombe and Isaac Hubern just rolling their carts into position. They'd held back to make sure that they didn't go any further, as you'll notice this time, because of where we are at Ella Park and the, how far the start line is away from the paddock, that we've not had the usual gaggle of parents making their way down and help us down onto that dummy grid. So the drivers this time particularly helped by the fact that all of the grid positions are marked out F1 style here uh, on the... Uh, grid here at Ella Park but then the numbers are in the top corner of each one 
that uh, our drivers are able to make their way round comfortably. Lights are on the overhead gantry, then they go green and we are away and racing here at Ella Park. It's a good start from Larry Price. He's going to cut all the way across and try and get to the inside at the first corner in this very, very strong opening heat. Anyone really of the top 10 can really make hay and try and get towards the front. There's a little bit of contact in the middle of the pack as the drivers scrabble for position as they head towards Shoemakers for the first time. Harris Alley, though, leading the way already from Thomas Potter and James Fabricius. There's multiple spinners then down there. Sullivan is one of them. Great Trex as well. Cameron Tipping and one of the house of goes will try and get the number as they come through. Think it could be Max. We'll find out. It's the 38 of one of the two house he goes. It is Max house he go facing the wrong way. So four spinners on that opening lap as they drop down. We have had a change for the lead though. Thomas Potter down the inside of Aris Alley, down at Alan Wones, and now. Potter will lead them over the line for the first time here in this eight minute plus one lap final. And he moves to the inside, defends early doors from Harris Alley, James Fabricius. Then it's Larry Price up into fourth place with Freddie House to go. Harry Samuel, Tom Drake, Benjamin Lorne, Jensen White with a strong opening lap. He's made up at least for seven or eight places up into ninth with Alfie Forrester rounding out the top ten. Fabricius down the inside at Holmes and Price is going to come alongside as well of Larry Price. Down of, of Harris Alley, he's down the inside. Price up to third. Alley then down into fourth place as Potter continues to lead the way, bouncing over the uh, raised bumps on the inside there. In the background, Benjamin Lorne behind Tom Drake. He's taken a slightly different line as now Fabricius has a think about going down the inside of Potter and Potter goes wide down there at Degna 1. That could give Fabricius the opportunity into Shoemakers, but it's a double apex right and there's not much space on the inside there for him to come through and he will uh, have to hold on to second place for the time being running out there the tires on the outside that's what's defining the track li limits this weekend not the curb on the outside that is just really a painted bit of concrete down the big hill there you saw the amount of drop off on the way down there from that camera point down there towards Barney's. Fabricius on the back of Potter. I get the feeling here, Fabricius is just going to stay behind Potter for a lap or two and really try and push him along and break away from Larry Price, who if he was right with him would be very, very dangerous coming into the final few laps for taking the victory here. I think if Fabricius can use Potter and work together to move away, that might give them a bit more of a cushion come that final lap as Tom Drake's down the inside of the 22 of Harry Samuel. And Samuel might lose a second one here to the 69 of Freddie House to go. Driver in the white helmet right in the middle of the pack. That's Stanley Clark on the back of Benjamin Lorne, who's got to be having a good showing. He's going to try and come down the inside now of House to go. House to go is going to struggle to get back in here as White is down the inside as well. Then there's a little bit of side pop between them. Will White get the cut back? House to go though defensive into the middle part of the corner and Alfie Forrester as well running nicely inside the top 10, right on the back in front behind him, Lewis Hall in the 44 cart. Stanley Clark down the inside of Isabella Stansmore Wilson into the final corner here. That could give George Ralston a good run and Fabricius has found a way past Thomas Potter now. We saw the flash at the top that moved Fabricius up on the timing screen. He went green, that moves him up to the top as White now is down the inside of House to go once again. He is through into the right hand. There's a lot of house ago had managed to uh, hold on to that one for half a lap at least. There is Fabricius at the front who was, for me, watching the, without watching live timing, but yesterday just having a look at the drivers out there was one of, if not the quickest driver on the track. And for me, goes into this race day as one of the favorites for victory. He's managed to move past Potter and has started to open up a little bit of a gap. Back now as Potter is coming into the, uh, into the clutches of Larry Price. And Price, who's closed up since uh, Fabricius has got through past Potter, is now right on the back of him. I don't know if he's going to go too early. He's closed up at the end of the straight and Potter sets a personal best to try and hold on to that position. Now we've got White down the inside of Forrester. House go though, is back in front of uh, no, Stanley Clark. White's already moved the carts to the same colour, the 58 and the 51. Clark's going to try and hold it out all the way around the outside of Shoemakers. That would have put him on the outside, but now the move is going to be done down the inside. 
into Holmes and uh, in the background as well we've got a spin is that uh, Alfie Forrester facing the wrong way as the field has to go all the way around the outside of Forrester Forrester with the spin don't know if there was a yellow flag out down there for warning but Forrester tipped into a spin by Lewis Hall as they went side by side on the exit of Shoemakers keep an eye out on the live timing to see whether any anything's picked up in terms of warning then Ralston goes very very wide coming under pressure from Ralphie Branscombe he's having to take defensive lines and in doing so that's going to lose him time and back him not only into Branscombe but also into the 12 of, of uh, Max Wheatley as well who looked very quick in practice yesterday Round Shoemakers once again, the double apex right. There's Lewis Hall now on the outside of Stansmore Wilson. He's going to go down the inside this time. The move done a little bit sooner than what it was, but then he's gone wide and now Stansmore Wilson will have track position. Alex Lynn behind as well in the six. And now there's a real train of carts with all the way down from Lewis Hall with Alex Lynn. They're having to take evasive action from the door closing on him to have the... Uh, Taking a huge chunk of kerb. In the background, Sullivan and Grey Trex, two of the drivers involved in that opening lap spin, are now starting to come onto the back of this train, which is being led at the moment by pretty much Stanley Clark. And then there he is. Then there's the gap behind, back to everybody else with Freddie House to go. But now there's a good run down the inside from Stansmore Wilson, Alex Lynn, and Lewis Hall is through as well. And House to go goes wide, forced onto the rumble strip. Not for the first time, actually, in this race with instant there involving Lewis Hall running drivers very, very wide onto the rumble strip. He's rejoined the track, albeit right now down at the end of this tail of carts. I think he's behind Max Gray Trex. That's going to drop him. Down the order, that's put him outside of the top 15. I think Grey Trex is 18th, so that's going to drop him down there into that position with all the rest of the drivers progressing through. Sullivan has found a way past Wheatley and with Ralston in front as well now as they make that run down towards that first corner. Leader though, still James Fabricius leading the way, now has a gap of 1.3 seconds. Back to Thomas Potter, we're down to under a minute here. In the opening race of the day, Harris Alley holding on to fourth place from Tom Drake and Benjamin Lorne with Harry Samuel Jensen White. And then Stanley Clark in the background think he might run out of time to close in on this battle as down the inside Drake and Lorne side by side. They'll stay in the same positions or it looked like Drake had to defend and then got the run on the rest of the field as well. Down towards Alan Wones, the final heavy braking zone and real overtaking opportunity unless somebody's willing to send a move down the inside into the final corner 17 seconds which means there's two laps remaining here then in this opening race of the day two drivers in it have gone sub sub 50 seconds for Bricious and Price Price on that last lap as he closes into within a tenth of a second on the back of Thomas Potter at the front looking out the com box window Alex Lynn goes very very wide and he drops a couple of places down there at Shoemakers not sure why just caught it out of the corner of my eye the cart bouncing over the concrete rumble strip where the tarmac finished and the old runway here at Ella Park begins this is your battle for second place though your race leader already a second and a half down the road last lap board is out then for James Fabricius as Thomas Potter goes sub 50 as he holds on to second place from Larry Price. Look over the shoulder from Potter. Price though right in the wheel tracks as they head down towards Shoemakers for the final time. This is going to be the heavy braking zone inside. Potter's going to white line this to the inside then Price is going to try and go round the outside and get to the inside. He's alongside Thomas Potter as they head down towards O'Rossi for the final time. And Larry Price is through for second place. Down the inside on Thomas Potter. Potter back down the inside into Barney's. Hard on the brakes. Can he get it stopped? He can. And now he's going to defend heavily to the inside of Alan Wones. For Bricious has already got eyes on the chequered flag as he comes out of the final corner. For Bricious is going to take victory in heat number one. Thomas Potter, Larry Price, second and third. Fantastic battle between those two. And then Harris Alley comes through. The pole sitter, he's going to be fourth in front of Tom Drake, Benjamin Lorne, Harry Samuel, Jensen White, Stanley Clark, and Isabella Stansmore Wilson with George Ralston. Oh, Branscombe comes through for 10th, sorry. Ralston, Stansmore Wilson, Wheatley, and Sullivan.
completing your top 14. Then it's Lynn, Grey Trex, Hall, Housigo, Ward Alley, Maximus Lewis, Alfie Forrester after that spin at half race distance in front of Cameron Tipping, Isaac Hubern and Max Housigo.